How's it going guys? So today is a rigid body quick tip and uh, sort of the point of this video is my process on how I add a little bit more control when it comes to making sort of an interesting composition with rigid bodies because a lot of times if you want to actually make a shape similar to this one, you'll get all your shapes together kind of spread out. You'll add the rigid body, you'll press play, and they'll all crash together. Now the problem with that is, particularly this one, I wanted the you know the bigger objects to be here, and then these smaller objects, which as you can see here, they're in the crevices. So you have a smaller object and smaller object, and I could even add smaller ones that'll be in the crevices. But the problem with that is, if you were just to set them all to um, simulate at the same exact time, the smaller ones would crunch in the middle, the big ones would be outside, and you won't have a good composition. I mean, also, if you're trying to wonder what a practical example of that is, say you have a jar and you want to put a, you know, a bunch of, say, beads inside of a jar and you want the uh, big ones on the bottom, you could try to, you know, simulate them to go to the bottom. But again, it's hard to kind of control that composition. And this quick tip is going to show you the best way to sort of try to get a little more control with sort of your hectic, rigid body uh, world. Before we get into that, I do want to shout out that the Hard Surface Essentials pack is still open. We actually decided to keep the bonus pack up until the new year, which has over two hours of tutorials for making two different hard surface environments along with the bonus materials and the pack is also kit ops integrated so if you want to check that out it's for thirty dollars you can get that in the description now let's get into the tutorial so we're going to go ahead and get that done so i'm going to open up a new file and we're going to go straight into how to do it that's one really just quick trick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit shift a i'm going to go ahead and get an um an icosphere and i'm going to just subdivide him till he's nice and round something like this I'm a shade smooth and we're going to go straight to the physics and click rigid body now this for this one in the middle uh, just for this particular composition you don't always have to do this but I want to go from active to passive so things just crash into it he'll be the centerpiece now I'm going to go ahead and get another icosphere bring it out shade smooth we're going to rigid body keep it at active and go from convex hull to uh, sphere just to keep it at the shape we want now to actually get these rigid bodies to work, one thing I'm gonna do over here is in the scene properties, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off gravity, shift A, and we're gonna go ahead and get in air force field, force, now that we have that force field, click on the force field button over here and give yourself about a strength of negative 800, just to pull everything in. And if you press play, you can see it works pretty well. So now what I'm gonna do is start making this composition by hitting shift D, moving it around. Um, this is completely just for this particular example. Whatever rigid body project you're wanting to work work on, this, pr this process will work with it. So what I'm gonna do is press play and then let that simulate and say, I don't like how they're doing that. I'll go ahead and duplicate these guys over here and we'll simulate it one more time. I just want them to be dispersed pretty well. And um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, here's what's going to happen. I want them to stay this way, but I want to add some smaller ones around to crash into it again. How do you get them to stay that way, but still be independent rather than having to sort of mesh them all together and completely destroy your animation? What you'll do is you'll select everything, go to F3 and type in visual transform. And then right here, apply to visual transform. And what happens now is if I go to press play, they're there, they're set. They're not out here in the out. They, it applied where they were currently located and now they're just rigid bodies hanging out by themselves. And so now what I can do is I can go ahead and duplicate this guy and then I'll make him smaller so I can get that composition for the, you know, the art piece that I'm trying to do and then make a bunch of them to go around. Now the point of this video was that one trick, the apply visual transform. It's almost like apply modifier in a way, but it still keeps these guys as rigid body but it doesn't, um, you don't have to redo the simulation to get the next level of detail for this piece. And then now what I'll do is I'll press play, have them crash in, and then now they're kind of sucking into the middle. That's not what I want. So I'll go right about here, and I want them to stay right there. Again, highlight everything, F3, apply visual transform, we'll go to the beginning, and now they're just hanging out. And then what I'll do, of, of course, is go ahead, duplicate one more, make them small, and then make a whole bunch of them for the rest of this thing. Okay, so now I have all my rigid bodies here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the force field and give myself maybe negative 500 because I don't want them to crash really hard into it and disrupt 
the nice composition I have already on the placement of these spheres. So I'll bring them in like this and we're done. We have a really cool um, piece of art and it's done. And of course, what I'll do is I'll highlight everything and to finish it off, apply visual transform. So when we go to the beginning of the animation, they're already sitting and you can do some fun stuff with that as well. So now that they're sitting here, for example, say I want to apply some more variation for this whole composition. I'll go to force field, say I'll add a vortex and give it a strength of 20. And then I can just press play and then make sure everything spins around. Say I want to make it a uh, hundred like that and say, I'll switch it from plane to point and then we'll do it again. And then now that since they're all set, you can really have some fun and um, do some fun things like this and, you know, go crazy with it, do whatever you want. But again, being able to set them as visual transform so that they begin where you want them to begin so you can go further with your animation, further with your composition is incredibly valuable. And I'm super grateful I figured it out and I figured it would be great to show you guys as well. So there you go. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.